Hey, it's Chris again. Today we're going to talk about setting up a WireGuard VPN server on your DDWRT router. Now, what is WireGuard? Well, it's a really good protocol for VPN that's recently been added to the Linux kernel, and we now have an option to set it up on our DDWRT routers. It's much faster than OpenVPN. I have another video about setting up an OpenVPN server. You can check that out. But you'll find that this is both much faster and much easier to set up. So let's get directly into it. So first of all, I followed this guide that's on the DDWRT forum. I'll provide a link in the video description below. Excellent guide. You have to be logged into the forum in order to download the guide. But go ahead and look at that. That's the true authority on setting up a WireGuard VPN server. So of course, I'm assuming, first of all, that you have DDWRT installed on your router. And hopefully you have a relatively recent build. Mine is from January 2021. You've got to go to the setup section and go to the tunnels. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a tunnel. So first of all, we're going to enable this tunnel and it is the WireGuard protocol. This uh, CVE mitigation we can disable because I have a relatively newer build. Uh, NAT via tunnel, I'm going to disable this. The local port, I can leave it alone. The MTU, I can leave it alone. And I'm going to generate a key. Now we're going to need this a little while later, but for now it's okay to just leave that on there. And I'm going to unclick the firewall inbound. And we need to give the WireGuard subnet an address. So we're going to give it 10.4.0.1 in the 24 netmask. So that just means that anything connecting will connect as 10.4.0. something. So apply settings. All right, so right now the server theoretically is up, but we want to connect to it, of course. So what you need to do is you need to scroll down a little ways and click add peer. So this is for adding clients and you'll do this as many times as you have clients. Okay, we keep going down. Okay, so right here we can give it a name. So I'm going to give this one a name of laptop. And this will be the address that the laptop connects as. So we'll just give him 10.4.0.7, let's say. And we need to provide a DNS, so I'll just provide Google's DNS server. Under allowed IPs, 10.4.0.7 with the 32 netmask. And we're going to allow routing IPs via the tunnel. Persistent keep alive, you don't really need to set for something like a laptop, but I like to set it. Uh, what this does is it kind of like, it sets out continuous, are you there, are you there, are you there, to keep the connection alive. And we would need to fill out this peer's public key, but we don't have it set up yet. So just give us a moment here and we'll, we'll figure this out. So I'm just going to apply this for now. It's not complete. So we need to connect using our laptop. So how do we go about that? You need to go to the WireGuard website. You go to installation and there's all these installers. So right now I'm running on a Windows machine. So I downloaded the Windows installer and I installed it. So you would do the same. And if you're going to install it for Mac OS, of course, the experience is going to be very similar to what I'm about to demonstrate. So once you have it installed, you should have in your tray icons a WireGuard client. If you open that up, what we can do is we can add a new tunnel and we'll add an empty tunnel to start. And we can give it some name. So I'm going to call this DDWRT demo. And I want to point something out. First of all, this laptop, this client has a public key and a private key. So that public key, I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go back to my router configuration. And under the peer configuration settings, there's a peer public key. I'm going to paste that public key into there. And I'm going to apply the settings. And while that's going on, I need to fill out the remainder of this section. So first is this interface section. And I will, of course, provide this in the video description below. But this is the port we're going to connect to, uh, 51820, which is the default port. You may recall that from when we set up the server. Uh, this is the address we're going to connect as. So again, we set that up as part of our peer configuration right there, 10407. And we're going to tell it to use a Google DNS server. So that's that section. But then we need to add a peer section. And we'll just edit it a little bit. But this here, this is all about the server I'm connecting to. So first of all, the public key of the server I'm connecting to. Well, I can go back and find that. It's right here. 
So I'll paste that in there. The rest of these settings are more or less consistent. The only thing that's going to change is the endpoint. Okay. So I just want to point something out. I'm running my router on my local network right now, and my router thinks it's running on WAN 192.168.5.204. So I'm telling it that's where I'm, where I'm going to connect. Okay. And I'm connecting to that same port. So I save that. So now I just want to talk a little bit about how I'm going to test this setup. Because what I have right now, the router I've been setting up this morning, is actually connected to my main router. And I'm just doing this because it's a test router. Uh, its WAN port, or its internet port, is connected to my main router, and it has some IP address on my main router's network, okay? Uh, and that's how it's connecting. And, I, you know, it says OpenVPN server, because I use the same image in my OpenVPN video. Uh, and so what this means is, if I'm going to connect to the WireGuard server, I really should be doing it from outside the router, right? Like, I shouldn't be connected to this router in order to test that I can connect to its VPN. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect to my main router, and I'm going to tunnel in to my test router using the IP address that that router has on the network. So that will appear as if I'm coming from outside to this router. Now, ultimately, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to install our server, our WireGuard server, on our actual main router that's connected to the internet. And a way to test that is, you know, you can connect your laptop to a personal hotspot on a cell phone. And that, that way you're really coming in from outside. You're coming in from the internet. And that's a good way to test that you really can connect from outside your own network. But for now, I'm going to connect... Uh, I'm going to connect to my main network and I'm going to try to connect into my server through the IP address that it's been assigned. So once again, the IP address that it's been assigned is 5204 and that explains why we are trying to connect to 5204 right here. Okay, so I just connected to my main network and what I want to show you is I can no longer contact the router that I was configuring. If you remember, that router's IP address was 192.168.11, and I'm getting no responses from it. And if I try to do something in here, I'm not going to get anywhere at all. So if I go back to my WireGuard configuration and I click on this guy and I say activate. Okay, now it's activated and we see some data going through and all of a sudden, I'm able to contact that host. And that's because I'm now tunneled into the network and suddenly this is working. I can connect to the router again because I'm tunneled into the router. If I go over to the tunnel section, you can see here you know, under WireGuard status for the laptop here, it says that uh, it can see that, that I'm connected. So that is working. Now, as I showed in my uh, OpenVPN video, what you probably want to do to make yourself connectable on the internet is you would go to setup and you go to DDNS and you'd set up a DDNS service. So this is a dynamic DNS service. I like to use noip.com and this allows you to be visible on the internet with some domain name. So like for instance, my name dot noip.com. If I go to noip.com and I set up an account with a username and a password, uh, I can fill out this section and the router will always keep my public IP address up to date with that name. And so what I would then do is under my WireGuard configuration, I guess I should deactivate it, I would edit the configuration and rather than connecting to an IP address, I'd connect to like myname.noip.com and then I'd actually be able to connect in through the internet. Now there's one other little handy thing that I want to show and I guess I need to reconnect to my <laughs> server in order to show it to you, so I'll reactivate. If I go under tunnels, so I've, set, I've manually set up a laptop, but perhaps I want to add something else. Uh, maybe I have like an iPhone or an Android phone, and I want, to, I want to tunnel into my home network using my phone. Well, the cool thing about a phone is it has a camera built into it. So if I click Add Peer, say I just call this phone, we need to give it uh, an address. So we'll, we'll put this one at 10046, let's say. And again, I'm going to give it a DNS name. Uh, so 104632. Uh, enable. We'll put that to 25. So rather than do this public 
key thing that we did with the laptop, what I can do, I can say QR code. And once that comes back, I get a QR code associated with this peer configuration. And using the WireGuard app on my phone, I can scan that QR code and I can get the configuration set up automatically. Now, I think what it's going to do is it's, it's going to point at the wrong IP address and you're going to have to go in and you're going to have to fiddle with it in the actual client. Um, I've done this on my own phone and it works totally fine. But that's a really handy way to quickly generate configuration for something like a phone. So really, that's all I wanted to show today. WireGuard is a really great pr protocol. I run it on my own router. I hope this video was really helpful for you. If it was, please give me a like. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.